I knew fellas are talking about Sony Vegas, if it is easy or hard. I think it is on the on the harder side, you know. I've heard from from people before that Adobe Premiere is a bit easier to work with. If you ask me, I'd say you should not use Sony Vegas, neither Adobe Premiere, you know, none of those two. If you want a really powerful video editor, go with DaVinci Resolve, because it is free. You will not have to pay for it, and it is, you know, it is uh, an industry standard, just as much as Adobe Premiere and uh, Sony Vegas. So, if you're looking for whoever is that asked that question, if you're looking for a video editor and you want, you know, a fully fledged video editor, try DaVinci Resolve. If you just want to make some simple edits like I do for my videos, then perhaps you don't even need uh, a fully featured video editor. I, for example, use one called Caden Live. It's also free and open source and it is good enough, you know. Sometimes it bugs out, but it's very rare. And it has the features that I I need to make my videos. So check it out. Kden Live. It's it's written as you say it. K D E N Live. Where are the the resupply lockers? Ah, here it is. You know, I, I see a lot of people pirating software. For example, pirating Premiere or Sony Vegas. When they really don't have to do that, you know, there are free options out there that you can use that are just as good, if not better. You know, I've, I've heard from some people that DaVinci Resolve is way better than those two options. Ah, they have a sentry there, okay. I should not be too quick to run in there then. And you know, I really mean this. In a world in which, a world, no, a, a world in which free software exists, you don't really need to pay for stuff. Unless you are, you are being, you know, pushed into doing that. For example, if you are going to work as an editor for like a company and they already use any specific software package, then you will have to know how to use that software package. But if you are doing things for yourself or by yourself, you know, even if you're editing for someone else, but uh, let's destroy this. Okay, let's take care of this sentry at least. Can I? No, I could not take down the teleporter there. But you know, if you're doing things by yourself, you don't really need to abide by industry standards. Then go for whatever solves the problem for you and is the cheapest. And usually the answer to that is the free software, which there is plenty to choose from. You know, there's Caden Live, DaVinci Resolve, I think OpenShot is another one that's free. So you can check that, that one also, also as well. <laughs> and also face saying there, Caden Live is amazing. Yeah, it is a great piece of software. I really like it. Very nice. And Yuto is asking, to install some games on Linux, you don't need to use some commands. Yeah, you, you do. You go on Steam and you click install game. That's what you do. But I, I imagine you are asking, Newton, about the, the Linux terminal. You know, about inputting text commands to do stuff instead of using a graphical user interface. And that's something you can do on Linux. You don't have to do if you absolutely don't want to. Because there, there are enough good graphical interfaces that you can use on, on Linux distributions. And almost everything you have to do on your system, you can do it through the graf graphical user interface. But I, I always say to, to people who are interested on, on Linux that, you know, eventually you will want to use the terminal because it is very useful. Ah, come on, who shot that, that rocket there to, to Da Vinci? <laughs> who did that? <laughs> Because, you know, the, the text terminal is a very powerful tool and it allow, allows you to do a lot of stuff faster and with more control than if you are using the graphical user interface. And, you, you know, if you look for uh, one or two tutorials on your Linux distribution you know, and make sure those tutorials are up to date, look for the most recent ones, 
you should not have much of a problem using the, the terminal commands. Just make sure you, you look up what you are doing before using those commands, you know, just, just to be sure. <laughs> that this is why we are we are not being able to push the point here. We have a party going on, on spawn. <laughs> so that's why. Okay, let, let's keep on going. And people often talk about, you know, using the terminal on Linux as a negative point, like oh you on Linux you have to use the terminal. On Windows you can you don't need to. And I think it's the other way around, you know. On Linux you can do a lot through the terminal, and that's actually a positive point about it, not a, a negative point. I say that that's because I used to think, you know, that way that I don't want to use the terminal. I only want to use graphical interfaces, but it, it grows on you, you know. Where is the teleporter? I want to destroy the teleporter. Ah, come on, Firefly got me there. And about video editors, Inspector is saying there, DaVinci Resolve is a very good video editing program, actually. I've used it a ton and it's quite easy to get used to its features. Yeah, and it is very powerful. You know, if you're looking, if you are looking for free and open source video editors, you can even use Blender to edit videos. You know, the 3D software. 3D modeling software, Blender, it also has a, a feature-rich video editor. It's a bit of a different workflow to video to edit videos in Blender, but it can be done and the results are actually pretty good, you know, it's not a, a bad video editor at all. Okay, I want to get this medic here. Ah, could not do that, but I think he's low health, that medic. Perhaps Uncle Leo can finish him off. With his Australian Force of Nature, very nice Uncle Leo. Brings back memories, you know, the, the first Australian I dropped on MVM, actually the only one I've dropped on MVM, but <laughs> my, my first rare item drop was an Australian Force of Nature. Back when two cities launched, you know, I played a lot of M MVM back in those days. And I can't hit my shots on this pyro here. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> okay, I, I'm dead. Yeah. D didn't hit a shot there. <laughs> but yeah, I played a lot of MVN when 2 Cities was released, and I remember I got uh, an uh, Australian Force of Nature. Australian Force of Nature. It was actually quite expensive because Australian weapons were new, so I was able to sell it for a, a good price on the, on the community market. And I am dead here, okay, no problem. And you two is saying Linux is open source and very good to use, but it is a pain to install. It depends on the distribution you're choosing, Newton. I currently run Arch Linux, and I won't say it is hard to install Arch Linux, but because it doesn't have a graphical installer, you have to, to install it using terminal commands from the start, I had to to actually, you know, study and take notes and do my research to be able to install it properly. But most Linux distributions nowadays aren't like that. You can very easily install, for example, Linux Mint, Pop OS, Ubuntu, Zorin OS. All of those have graphical installers that that basically are just, you know, choose the settings you want and click next, and it will install for you. I think where people have issues is with unsupported hardware. You know, most things are plug and play on, on Linux and they just work out of the box, but there is some hardware that is more propri proprietary that hasn't, doesn't have support yet. You know, it's usually an issue with newly released GPUs and processors. So if you are running a, a GPU and a CPU that is, you know, last gen, then you should not have issues installing Linux on, on any machine. I've seen some people have problems as well with some brands of notebooks. I have a notebook running Ubuntu and I've always had Dell notebooks and they usually work okay with Linux, they don't have problems. I think that Dell themselves also sells notebooks with Linux pre-installed on them. They're actually cheaper, by the way, so if you're looking for a, a cheap notebook, 
perhaps consider buying one with Linux pre-installed. You don't have to pay for the Windows license, so that's why they are cheaper usually. So it's an alternative. But it too, nowadays it is easy to install Linux. It is a bit harder if you are trying to do, you know, custom stuff like dual booting with Windows, then it's a bit trickier. But if all you want is to install Linux on a machine, then it, it is very straightforward nowadays. I need to say, you need a pen drive, you need to, to access the BIOS, but it's the same thing for, for Windows, Newton. You know, those things are just things you have to do if you are installing an operating system yourself on a machine. For example, on my wife's machine, she has Windows on, on her machine, and when I, I installed it, I built her machine, I bought the parts and built the computer. I had to do that myself, so it's the, it's the same thing, actually. You know, in, in that sense, it's not very different from installing Windows. It's just that most people don't install operating systems on their computers. It, it comes pre-installed. So that's, uh, I think that's the difference you're trying to, to make there. In regards to the Steam Deck, I made a video about it a couple of months ago, talking about how I don't think the Steam Deck is anything to be hyped about. At least not in terms of, you know, a revolutionary technology. It is a cool product, it is a good price proposition, that's for sure. But what I'm excited about this Steam Deck is the environment that will be built up around it, you know. There's been a lot of effort from Valve to make gaming on Linux better. And partly that's been, you know, for multiple reasons, it's been going on for a couple of years now. But the recent push there's been for improving gaming on Linux is because of the Steam Deck, because it will launch with SteamOS 3.0, which is a Linux distribution. So they have been working quite a lot to make a bunch of cool and mainstream games work on Linux. I'm gonna die here. And I'm actually more excited for that than for the Steam Deck itself. Another thing what I want to see is other companies, you know, getting that, that concept of a handheld portable PC and making it more available. Just like, you know, we had the, the one from Oculus, what's it called? The, the one that Facebook bought. I don't know what's the name of that VR headset. The Oculus Quest, I think it is. Which, you know, it, it is part of Facebook and that's trash, but what I've heard from the hardware of the Oculus Quest itself is that it is pretty solid hardware. And it is a better pr price proposition than the Valve Index, in my opinion. You know, the Index is, is too expensive. So I want to see that happening with the Steam Deck as well. You know, Valve releasing like a cool concept product and then other brands running with it. I want to see a, a Dell Steam Deck and HP Steam Deck. You know, I, that, that's what I want to see from the Steam Deck. Because that, I think, would be very cool. I know there are already already companies who developed products like that. There is Aya and there is also GPD. But but so far, they've been too pricey, you know. And I, I actually want another large company who can mass produce stuff and therefore make it cheap to run with this concept. And I think Valve could help make this become a reality by launching this Steam Deck and proving that there is a, a consumer base for this sort of form factor. You know, I think that's actually the best thing that can come out from this Steam Deck, actually. I missed my shot there and I'm dead, okay. <laughs> but it was a, a good run, regardless. <laughs> 